promo videos, intros, openers, whatever you want to call it, because in this After Effects video, we're going to talk about four minimal techniques to creating promo video type stuff inside of After Effects. And thank you to rocketstock.com for sponsoring this video. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. If you couldn't tell from the intro, I didn't really know what to title this video. So either way, whether you're doing promo videos, an opener, or just like a one screen intro, this tutorial is gonna focus on four amazing techniques that will help you increase your quality of work from a very minimal perspective. You know, when I do the minimal style, I like to think that I don't have a lot of time to do something or I'm just really lazy. But this is gonna be a great tutorial whether you don't have a lot of time or you really dig the style like I do. So let's go ahead and jump in the video and let's get started. So for our first technique, we're gonna talk about one of the most important elements first and that is typography. When creating promo videos or an opener or an intro with a very minimal style, the typography is gonna have a huge impact on the design. And if you want to follow along with this tutorial step by step, you can go ahead and download our project files. The link's in the video description. They're free to download, so why not download them? Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about typography first. So first things first, you need to familiarize yourself with a handful of different typefaces. So one of my favorite typefaces over here on the right side is Gotham. Another one that I like to use is Beatbaz Nuu, which is a phenomenal font as well. And you see this is a very nice sans serif type of font face. And there's also a few other ones that you know, you're know going to have to just look up and find on your own. So it's good to have a few typeface families that you really stick with that will usually work when you're trying to create minimal titles. I'm going to stick with the typeface Gotham. And what's cool about having a typeface, it has plenty of different fonts in this typeface that you can choose between. So let's take a look at our first title here. So we have two titles that have the same styles applied to them, same size. And it's the same size and it can work. What I would suggest when you have two titles that are the same size, don't flush them in the center. Do more of a left align and in my opinion we have two of the same fonts i think when they're left aligned looks great if you want to do any center alignment font what i was just doing is taking the second title or the top one and make it smaller and change the you know font to a lighter typeface and then move these closer together and this looks really good because there is contrast between the main title and the second title and that looks really good so usually you want to decide whether you want to have contrast or no contrast so it's really up to you what you want to do but for me what i'm going to do is left align this and I'm going to bring up my title safe by clicking on this crosshair and clicking on title action safe. And I'm going to place this on the left side of our screen because our footage is more based on the right side. And, you know, shout out to Julia here, who's our awesome model. And what we're going to do here is just have this nice contrast between the title and our image. And it makes complete sense. So it's really up to you how you place this placement and typography choice is a huge part of great typography. But once you have everything in place, you kind of want to animate this because, you know, this isn't Photoshop or Illustrator. This is After Effects and we animate things in this, right? So what we can do to animate this very cleanly, we can open up our title layer, go to the animate tab, and we're going to do some very simple, you know, animation because this is supposed to be minimal. We're going to click on this animate icon and click on position. And then what we'll do here is we'll bring down the position just like this. Just bring it down. Then we'll go to this add button and we're going to go to property and we're going to add opacity. We're going to bring the opacity down to 0%. Then we're going to open up the range selector one and we'll add a keyframe for start. We'll move forward maybe by a second and set it to 100. So now we'll have this animation coming in just like that. And now we can go into the advanced tab and if you have multiple words, like I do here, and I don't want it animating in by letter. Where it says based on, it says characters. We can do it by words. And now I'll just come in like that, and that looks cool. We can make both the keyframes easy. Ease keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard, and it's a really nice animation to add there. You can also adjust the smoothness if you don't want it to be so you know smooth in the animation. So, quick little look, it kind of just pops in there, and you know looks fine. Or you can keep the smoothness up to 100% and have a pretty typical animation. It's up to you how you want to have that. I'll keep it at 100% and essentially boom there is a nice clean typography animated very minimal and it's ready to go so typography is easy okay okay let's do something a little bit easier let's talk about simple motion graphics that can complement your typography so next up on the list we're going to make this pop with some shape layers so we can grab the pen tool here at the top and we're going to start with a line so click on the word fill make sure it's set to none click ok click on the word stroke at the top set the solid color and click ok and i'm going to use the stroke uh, size of three and I'm gonna be very congruent with this so I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna add a point right at the top of my first you know text block there and hold down shift on my keyboard and go to the bottom text block just like this and click another point and boom now we have just a nice little line there that goes with our titles and it looks very clean so what we can do here 
we can go into our shape layer one and go to add and we're going to add a trim pass i always do trim paths in my tutorials so if you've been watching a handful of my tutorials you're probably tired of this effect but it is an extremely effective effect inside of the shape layers so what we can do here instead of just doing zero to 100 sort of deal we'll set the start to 50. we'll set the end to 50 percent and then we'll add keyframes for both the start and end and we'll move forward and eh, maybe by a second or so and we'll set the start to 0% and the end to 100%. Now you'll get this animation opening up just like that. And that's a good way to animate a clean line. Now we, we want to add a little bit more because, you know, this is Sunduck Film. We don't talk about just one you know, specific technique. We talk about multiple techniques. So we'll come here to the top and we'll grab the ellipse tool. This time, we'll set the solid color on on the fill. And we'll turn off the stroke. You don't really have to turn on the stroke, but I will because I like being very perfectionist. Then we'll hold down shift on keyboard, draw out a perfect circle right here. And we'll want to match the circle up perfectly with the left alignment of our titles and that looks good then we'll come here to add and we'll add a repeater and we'll open up repeater one we'll go into the transform repeater one zoom out here real quick and then we will bring down the x position which is right here and we can increase the number of copies to go across until the right alignment of our title we might need to adjust the x position just by a little bit to make that alignment work and i think that's pretty close just for our tutorial purposes we'll keep it there bring it down by a little bit though and boom now we can animate this just like anything else so what we'll do here is we'll add a keyframe for copies move it forward in time actually we'll move it forward all the way to say the end of our animation and then i'll set the copies down to zero and so now we have a little bit of shape and title design in our second part of our tutorial so now for our third technique since i'm a little bit lazy i'm going to recycle content from our last tutorial and we're going to talk about creating a juxtaposition for your background using distortion. All right, so now we're going to talk about what you all came here for, and that is the awesome distortion. This thing is awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do is go to Layer, New, Solid. Okay. And then, you know, we call it Noise. Click OK. I think I spelled that correctly. I feel like I incorrectly spelled that. Okay, don't worry about it. So now we'll go to Effect, Noise and Grain. And we're gonna add fractal noise, one of the best effects inside of After Effects. And what we'll do here is we'll set the fractal type to max, and we'll set the noise type to block. Then we'll want to increase the contrast and lower the brightness until we see like very minimal blocks here. And you know we'll probably just copy those settings that I have there. And then we'll go into the transform tab here, and we'll uncheck uniform scaling. We'll increase the width. And increase the height maybe a little, a little bit. It's really up to you how much you really want this to be. And you'll understand this, how this works in a second. And from here, we'll go into the evolution options. And we'll all click the stopwatch for random seed. And we'll type in time, star or asterisk, five, and we'll click off. And now you're just going to get like these blocks moving in here, whatever, right? So that's not the point of the effect. So what we do here is go to layer, pre-compose, make sure that noise layer was selected. Move all attributes into new composition, and we'll just call it map. And now we'll turn off the layer. Then we'll go to layer, new adjustment layer. Go to effect, distort, displacement map. Where are you? There's displacement map. There you are. Such a great effect. And for displacement map layer, we'll set this to the map layer. And now we're going to get this distortion all across our entire you know composition like so. And now the background is rippling around like this and it looks really nice and then, then we go back to our displacement map and we can increase the you know displacements and now we're gonna get some crazy distortions in here to the point where you can't read the text which is okay not really so what i suggest doing is bring the adjustment layer underneath all your titles and just leave it on top of your background or your footage that way the only thing that's going to ripple is the background and that's what's going to make things interesting so there is our distortion map and it looks good and lastly, for our fourth technique, we're gonna talk about creating a really nicely designed background using assets. So now we're here for the most important part of the tutorial, which is the background. Typically, you might wanna work you know, your titles in footage, photos, or some sort of animated background. What I do with this background is, which is just my cinematography reel for this uh, tutorial purpose, but what I did is I hit T on my keyboard for my background, and I lowered the opacity down to 30%. So obviously with this, you could not you know, read the titles or things wouldn't look good. The contra it's too contrasty, right? So by bringing down the opacity of our clip, everything looks good and we're able to read the titles. And that's really what's important when we're overlaying titles. We need to be able to read them if they're important, right? So I highly suggest doing that. 
And on top of that, I always suggest in my tutorials having some sort of lens flare pack. And the reason why I always suggest having a lens flare pack in your arsenal is because if you're lazy like me, you can just drag and drop a nice, you know, cinematic lens flare on your footage, and it looks like you did a great job. Everyone loves lens flares, apparently. At least, you know, my clients have, but, uh... Anyway, my friends over at Rocketstock.com hooked me up with a pack called Lucent Zoom Lens Flares 128 Lens Flares in here shot on real anamorphic lenses, and these things are awesome. They will make you feel like JJ Abrams, so I'll go ahead and drop a link in the video description if you want to check these out. But let me show you, you know, how you can apply a lens flare to your footage. So whether you're using the lens flares that I'm using over at Rocketstock.com or your own lens flares. So what we do with a lens flare asset is you'll typically apply it to your timeline. So, and we can put this above everything we want to. And these are 4K lens flares, so I have to scale mine down by a little bit. And what we can do here is go to blend mode and set this to screen. So, and now I've added a nice lens flare to my footage to really spruce this up. And, you know, it adds just a lot more detail to our composition. And for a bonus technique in this video, if you want to spice this with a slideshow, you know, a quick technique transition that you can apply is just doing simple positioning uh, keyframes. So what I have going on here, I'm just going to demo this is I simply have my first composition here moving over from the right side to the left side just going off like that and simply I have a composition on the bottom here and what I could do with the bottom you know uh, composition is what I could do here is add a keyframe when my first slide is off they go back to where my first slide is on and grab the exposition and just by using the composition edges of our clip here I'm gonna move this all the way over I'm gonna move this over to the right edge of our composition and make them easy easy keyframes and this allows me to create a very nice transition slideshow and it looks really good. So if you want to work multiple slides, that's how you can do that with our techniques that we talked about in this video. So there are my four techniques for creating this minimal promo video opener intro. I still haven't decided what I'm going to call this tutorial in the title, but there it is for this video. If you did enjoy this video and were able to take away these techniques, which I hope you were able to, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We post two post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always...